Okay. Before I get off into... Damn, that didn't come out right at all. Before I go away and come up with something else to bitch about or whatever, I want to talk about perspectives and points of view. A lot of people don't view things exactly the same. And I've probably touched on this before. Whether it be race or gender, a lot of people don't view things exactly the same. No one really has a GEF perspective, if you would. Yes, that was a Mass Effect reference. I use the GEF a lot as a reference because they're innocent, if you would. Like, childlike innocence. Because they aren't really bad guys. But, you know, you, you poke a dog with a stick and it will bite. You know, you try to take food from an animal and it will eat you with its food. You know, so I want to talk about perspective real quick. Just bear with me. You know, how you view something isn't always how someone else views something. Everybody, for the most part, has a different view of law and order and justice. Because the law is not always justice. But it's the best we can do without beheading someone, like in the old days. Justice means different things to different people, you know. You rape and kill my wife, I kill you, to me that's justice. It also prevents you from doing it to someone else, you know. And to some people they'd be like, well, you're no better than the guy you kill. That is true. But he won't be killing or raping anyone else. So you kind of, you tell me if you agree with that, you know, because I agree with that, you know, and, and you got to look at it from the other side. What if you're the rape victim? You know, would you want this motherfucker going out and doing it to someone else or coming back to get you again? Yeah. Like I said, perspective. So through life, you know, I try to look at things from every perspective, you know, the man's perspective, the woman's perspective, the child's perspective, generally the child's perspective, perspective. It's probably closer to right because a child is taught how to be the person that they're going to become. And if you teach a child right from wrong, their opinions will deviate or vary towards yours. Now let's say, sometimes I'll be the only one who'll own it. Sometimes I'm the biggest fucking hypocrite that ever was. But it also depends on the perspective of that truth. You know, like, it's raining outside right now. And somebody might always have bright sunny days even when it's raining. And you just can't convince them that it's raining. Even if the water's splashing up in their face. It's all about their perspective. Ow. Now the thing is. When it comes to perspective. You know. You can't always view it from your point of view. Now granted your point of view might be better than mine. But if you can explain your point of view to me then maybe, just maybe, I'll understand your point of view. And then I might realize your point of view is actually better than mine. Or vice versa. Um, I'll give you an example. The Kill Bill scene. I'm going to do the lines. And you know, if you like it, you know, go with it. Lucy Lou, I'm going to try to give you the best I can do. Alright, here we go. As your leader, I encourage you from time to time and always in a respectful manner to question my logic. If you are unsure a particular plan I've placed in the action is the wisest, please tell me so. But allow me to convince you right here and now that no subject will ever be taboo. Except, of course, the subject that was just in the discussion. The price you pay for bringing up either my Chinese or American heritage as a negative is I collect your fucking head. Just like this fucker here. Now, do any of you sons of bitches got anything else to say? Now's the fucking time. Okay. Now, let me explain how I viewed that. Because if you watch the movie, you see the little Japanese dude in the corner just saying all kinds of bad shit about her. And from his perspective, and from ancient Japanese hatred towards Chinese people, I see where he was coming from. Did she need to cut off his head? Fuck yes. Why? Because in case people have forgotten, 
There was also an ancient Chinese versus Japanese occupation back in the 40s. Where none of you who are watching this video probably was even alive. So, you know, when you think about it, you know, I, I think she was well within her rights. But again, it's all about perspective. Using that as an example, you know, when you meet people out in the world, culturally or genderally, you don't really generally know where the hell they're coming from until you get to know them. So, you know, if you met me on the streets, you'd be like, okay, well, we don't really know what his ethnic background is. Then somebody in your crew will be brave enough to say, why don't we just ask him? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. All right. I'm going to go back in time to where Rick and I went to Florida to Taste of China, I think. And I've touched on this before, how him and the other man, both of them being of Gaijin or Guaylo or Pale Face, as those are cultural references to white people. Guaylo, Chinese, Gaijin, Japanese, Pale Face, Native American. So, perspectively speaking, they were talking. And like I said, I've touched on this before, how the guy kept looking at me because he wasn't sure what the fuck I was. And I had to tell him. It's like, dude, I'm part Native American. So if you got anything to say about Chinese people, knock yourself the fuck out. Was it wrong of me to say that? Maybe. Perspectively speaking, yes. But here's the thing about people. If you don't know where people come from, if you don't know what they've been through, you really can't understand their perspective. And now culturally, you know, we read about things like this in America all the time. As of lately, 2015 has been really bad to be a young black teenager. Even with the Black Lives Matters popping up everywhere and everything, this has really been a really bad to be young and black in general. And especially if you're in the age group from 16 to 25. Because compliance is more like defiance to most of them. And when I say them, I extend myself as well. But I don't, I don't, I comply. The cop asks me something, yo, I go on and tell him to get the shit over with. Because he's not coming back to bother me. He wants to tell him the truth. You know, unless I've done something to deviate his plan and fuck up his day. And he just says, yeah, you're that person that fits the description. Perspectively speaking, we all fit the description. Like, maybe 15 years ago, Charlottesville, my hometown, had a serial rapist who was six feet tall. Excuse me, six foot two, darker than me, and 300 pounds. I'm five, three and a half, a buck 20 at the time. And these three cops came up, with, excuse me, that was a mis misprint. These three vehicles came up with six cops. They were all ATF. I just got out the shower, and I had just got my movie back from Sunday. It's like the biggest rejection letter ever. That's nothing really to be proud of, but I was pretty proud of it. I said, yes, Sundance actually looked at my shit and gave me the finger. Hell yeah. So I'm walking up the street, right? And these cops, they come out of nowhere. Now, I didn't know there was cops at first. So when, you know, six guys pull up on you in a car and all you know how to do is fight, you know, I'm ready to take a fight because I didn't know there was cops until I seen the ATF on their, um, on their chest. I was like, what the fuck is the ATF doing? But I didn't know they were after me. It's <laughs> like, so, the fuck? I didn't do anything. So apparently, the neighborhood behind my neighborhood, where you have to go across a creek or whatever in Willoughby, somebody who knows the ATF agents was raped that day. And I fit the description. Because that person was wearing a Nautica jumpsuit. You know, a jogging suit, wool, you know, that kind of stuff. I came out my house in Nautica blue jeans and Nautica jacket, which I have not worn since that shit happened. So I'm walking up the street when this happens, and I'm like, what the fuck? So perspectively speaking, clearly they all needed glasses, even the guy with glasses. And they're like, dude, we need to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. So they start asking me these random ass questions. Where were you at? 7.45. He's like, well, I was in the bathroom. He's like, and what were you doing in the bathroom? So you don't want me to answer that question. You might want to answer that question or you're going to jail. It's like, dude, I was taking a shit. It's like, and where were you at 8 o'clock? I was still in the bathroom. I'm sure you're thinking 7.45 to 8 o'clock. Okay. Now here's where things get interesting. 
after I generally use the bathroom when I defecate, I generally wipe and wash my ass. Which means after I got off the toilet and did everything there, I jumped my ass in the shower. No one wants to go anywhere smelling like shit. Because you can't tell if someone can smell you or not. So to make sure that we don't smell, we all shower. Just to be on the safe side. Even if we don't need it, we shower anyway. So when I, when they pulled me over, I'm like, dude, you know, I was taking a shower. It's like, I made two phone calls while I was in the bathroom. Yeah, you probably shouldn't make phone calls or admit to talking to your friends while you're on the Thunder Bucket. But I was on the Thunder Bucket talking to my bro, Adrian. And I was like, look, let me call you back when I get back. Because I told him, he's the first person I told it. Sundance gave me the finger on my film, Fallen Dragons. All right, so cool. Go on about my business. Ain't thinking nothing else about it, you know, just. But when they got a hold of him, like, this is not cool. So then, it's like, we're going to give you a ride. I say, like, no, 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 no. That's not police procedure. You're not giving me a ride anywhere. I'm not going to the police station. I'm not going anywhere with you guys. And then secondly, ATF people don't give people rides. You guys are firearms and tobacco, which I don't smoke anything, and I am i don't own a firearm. So why are you after me? So they went through my bag, and I told them everything was a bag. Pictures of me as a child, a knife, some breath mints, a whole bunch of notebook things, you know, and my rejected film and my note from Sundance, because I was rushing up there to get that thing to Bruce. I was like, look, we got rejected by Sundance. Awesome. Okay. Well, that totally fucked up my day. So then these ass clowns proceed to follow me without following me. So I'm walking to the place where I currently work. I wasn't working there at the time. In fact, I can't remember the hell I was working at at the time. So I go there, and they follow me all the way to the University of Virginia. And I'm like, these motherfuckers are going to kill me. Because they literally think that I'm the serial fucking rapist because of the color of my skin. So I get my guy... It's their, uh, Bennett, I can't remember his first name, but Bennett, so he runs, um, a profile thing on the news, so he prints it out for me. Now, if I'm five foot three and a half, I don't give a fuck how far down the hill you are when you're coming up the hill. When you get up on me, you should know that I'm not six foot two, 325 pounds. As I've said before, I'm the size of the average Vietnamese woman. What the fuck I look like going around trying to rape some damn body? Some chicks are stronger than dudes, man. I ain't stupid. So then I'm really mad. And this is where the law and perspective really fucks you up. Okay? So I knew we have, we have U.S. Marshals here. So ATF is in Roanoke, apparently. The first place I went to was the Charlottesville Police Department to file a complaint. It's like, yo, dude, these dudes have harassed me thinking I'm the serial rapist when I'm not even that damn tall. And it's like, well, there's really nothing we can do about it because they're ATF and we don't have any authority over it. It's like, y'all are still fucking cops. Take the complaint. They wouldn't take the complaint. So they sent me to the U.S. Marshals, which is right up the block at the federal building. So I went to the U.S. Marshals and they told me, you know, they really couldn't do anything. They could take the complaint, which they did. But if you want an apology, you need to go all the way to Roanoke. I said, I'm not driving to Roanoke. For these jackasses accusing me of being a fucking serial rapist when the serial rapist is six feet three. That's a whole foot and a quarter taller than me. You know, you would think that these motherfuckers got the, the damn thing that they would have enough fucking concept to know the difference between a pair of blue jeans and a wool jumpsuit. Blue jeans are made out of denim. Not wool. Denim. So, prospectively speaking, clearly I never got my apology. Clearly I'm still bitter about it because just because somebody is of color doesn't mean they're guilty. But prospectively speaking, most people when they see somebody black or of color, they have a natural fear, I guess, and automatically assume that we're all rapists, thugs, and drug dealers. And so that's how I got into that. So, like I said, from perspectives of... Male, woman, boy, girl, youth, old. When you come in on somebody's perspective, culturally differences can really fuck you up. And I'm going to do another blog real quick right after this because I'm almost at the 15 minute mark. So I got to make this quick. In the end, 
how you see things and perceive things is how it's supposed to be. You have to check yourself before you wreck yourself or before you lose a friend that could have really been that same guy that would save your life one day. I had an issue about that once too when someone was being racist to me when they said something. And as I, it actually happened more than once because once it was a dude and once it was a chick. And the one with the chick was actually worse because her fear of me literally went in another direction. We'll, we'll touch that on the next video. But the dude said something. I was like, you know, I'll be that same black guy that you hate so much that will save your life one day. You know, and that's the thing, you know, perspective, man, is everything. And if you're not a very perspective person or respect someone else's perspective, it's best to keep walking like this with blinders on. I'm James Williams Jr. Stay tuned for my next video about the natural fear of people of color.